Hello again, college football fans. Just checking in with you today. I don't really have anything prepared. Obviously, no predictions to make, uh, no games to review, because nothing has happened since the last time we spoke. But it's been a long week. It's been Monday since the last time I posted anything, and I just wanted to see how you guys were doing. I missed you. I hope you're doing well. I hope everybody's okay. Uh, a couple things. Uh, first of all, uh, it seems like LSU is just going to continue to delay the inevitable down there in Baton Rouge, Red Stick. Uh, which doesn't seem too atypical for them right now. Uh, seems like there's a deeper problem than just Coach O down there in Baton Rouge. I mean, I know we had some problems with the basketball uh, team a few couple years ago, got into some hot water, and uh, it just seems like the maybe the administration uh, might be the the problem down there in uh, Corn Dog Land. But uh, they just need to go ahead and cut bait, man. This is, uh, I mean. The, the 2019 National Championship, anybody that's watched any football for any length of time could have seen and, and told everyone. I mean, I, I did. I, I said that that was just a perfect storm. Coach O basically won the lottery that year, okay? I mean, that was as the odds of everything happening for him the way that it did that season was as astronomical as it is of me winning the Georgia lottery. I mean, I don't even live in Georgia. Uh, but I feel, feel like I would have had a better chance of winning the Georgia lottery, not even buying a lottery ticket, than Coach O did to get all of those circumstances that he had. But, you know, it's like I said in my first video, uh, he got it, he did it. Nobody can ever take him away from, take that away from him. Ed Ogeron is a national championship winning coach. That's definitely more impressive than Coco learning sign language. But moving on... Um, uh, I, I think that uh, the, team, the the game that they're playing this Saturday, the people in LSU need to take a co close look at that coach on the other sideline because for the last couple of years, I've been saying uh, to anybody that'll listen, and obviously no one does listen, so that's why I'm uh, putting it on YouTube, throwing this out into the void and hoping someone can hear the wisdom. But uh, Mark Stoops is a guy that really needs to be looked at for big programs. Uh, I hear that name. I hear Lane Kiffin is being battered around. Uh, I think I think he was thrown into the hat for the Auburn job as well. But it looks like uh, he's going to be one of the names that comes up because at this point, the firing of Ed Ogeron is just on layaway. I mean, they just got to go and uh, and go ahead and and pay the bill because. It's it's an inevitability at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and start talking about the coaching search down there. I just feel like uh, Mark Stoops, I never hear about his name for big big jobs when the Auburn job came up. I, I felt like Mark Stoops should have been the first guy that they looked at because he knows how to build a foundation. Kentucky is just not a program that's going to be able to get all of the, all of the fun toys that you can get at LSU. But imagine... Uh, Mark Stoops with that Kentucky team that he's got right now with a five-star, you know, quarterback, two or three five-star wide receivers. I mean, you know, that would be a very dangerous program. And uh, obviously those are some toys that he can't afford up there at Kentucky. But you put him in a place like Baton Rouge, I would be very, very nervous as an Alabama fan uh, if that happened. But like I said, their administration seems to be a little spotty these days, so... We'll just have to see what happens down there. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about is my, the big upset pick uh, this week that I had uh, Auburn. First of all, I noticed that I, I made some mistakes on that uh, predictions video. Uh, obviously, I said 27-24, and then I think I just had a brain fart and said 28-24. 27-24 is my official upset score pick for the Auburn-Georgia game. Um, uh, before I forget, I also said fayetteville uh, Kentucky as well. I know it's Lexington. I was thinking about uh, Arkansas for some reason, but uh, Fayetteville can or Lexington. I try to do it again. Lexington, Kentucky is where uh, they'll be playing that game this week. But uh, back to Georgia. Back to the Auburn Georgia pick. You know, obviously that's a long shot. I'm stepping on on a very very thin limb to make this one. But uh, like I said before. Three-point spreads, that's not an upset pick. You know, when I make an upset pick, I want it to be an actual upset that was hard to see coming. And this one would, would be very, very hard to see coming. I'll look like a total genius if it happens. Uh, but, you know, I understand where you're coming from, Georgia fans. As an Alabama fan, I've been there so many times before. I mean, you know, we've had those, we've had these monstrous-looking defenses that... 
seemed impossible that anyone could ever do anything against. But, you know, it's just happened over and over again. Uh, 2012, that defense was – 2011, you know, I know 2011 gets the praise as being the all-time great defense for for Nick Saban. But, you know, you look at that schedule, they didn't have any dynamic quarterbacks to play against that year. That was – really, that was kind of before that was really kicking in in earnest, you know. But – so they they get the benefit of not having any superstars go in there and rack up a whole bunch of yards against them. So, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why they get the benefit of the doubt and the benefit of being uh, named the best defense that Saban's ever had. But uh, in my opinion, the best defense he ever had was in 2016 with Jonathan Allen and Gerard Payne and all those guys. Uh, just monsters everywhere. Reuben Foster was on that team. I mean, this this was a ridiculous defensive squad, nasty just aggressive in the backfield every play, and I just felt like there was no way anybody could could uh, could match up with them and, and put yards and points on the board. And then you know, come in comes back in, uh, uh, Deshaun Watson, and second half of that national championship game, that defense looked as hapless as any defense <laughs> Pete Golding has put out on the field. So it you know it can just happen when you run into these talents. Now I'm not saying that Bo Nix is Johnny Manziel or Deshaun Watson or anything like that, but he could have a day like that. He could have a he could play to that level. And I tell you what, he certainly was doing his best Johnny M imp- uh, impression last week. So uh, if he catches fire and has a hot hand, I'm just telling you guys. And and Saban has said it, and we've seen we have seen the climate of college football change over the last few years, and. Five years ago, I'm right with you. Uh, 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 an elite defense, maybe not five years ago, but ten years ago, certainly. An elite defense is going to get the better of an elite offense nine times out of ten in college football. But it's reversed now. An elite offense is going to get the better of a, an elite defense nine times out of ten. Now, I'm not saying Auburn has an elite offense. But if they can act like they're elite for a day, they can make things, they can make things difficult for Georgia. And also another thing for Georgia is... You know, I know that JT Daniels, if he's healthy, is better than Tom Brady. I know that, Georgia fans, but we just haven't seen it yet. I have no proof of it yet. We don't even know if he's going to be able to play. We probably are going to have Bennett in there, and I've seen Bennett when when the going gets tough. He folds. He folds. He just does. He did. And uh, I expect him to do it again if things get rough. Don't, you know, he's not going to be throwing to that Bauer kid for 60-yard touchdowns against Auburn if it's a close game in the second half. But, you know, all that being said, you know, this might be the year for Georgia. This might be the year of destiny for them, and they might go in there and just roll over Auburn and then roll over everybody else they have on the rest of their schedule this year. But I'm just not going to be convinced that they can do that until I see them do that. You know, it's been 1980. That's before I was born, a couple of years before I was born. So, you know, a lot of us have just never seen Georgia prove that they can go in week in, week out, and and put up a perfect season and win a championship. Because, uh, we, just, you know, what have you done for me lately? And I know they've come very close, but close... Uh, only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, as they say, and uh, it's no cigar. It's no cigar until you're raising. Until I see Kirby raising that trophy with a victory over over some over an elite team, like you know, if they can pull it off against Alabama this year, then you know I won't doubt them anymore. And when people say it, week six that they're you know unbeatable, I'll go ahead and 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 give them the benefit of that doubt as well. But until that happens, I'm not going to do it. And I know you Georgia fans are going to be frustrated with me until then, but you know we're just going to have to we're going to have to work through this. Believe me, we're going to get through this. But uh, I'm looking forward to this weekend, and I know you guys are too. And uh, we'll see you again soon.